Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. For this video, I decided to build a basic centrifugal pump and also test the blade designs using computational fluid dynamics. You can also download my PDF templates for this pump. I'll leave some links in the video description for how to get your copy. So this is the pump which I built. It's a centrifugal type pump made mostly from wood and plastic and it's driven by a DC motor with a pulse width modulation speed controller. I then ran the pump at various speeds to see how it performed. As you can see, the pump is being used in an open loop system, circulating water between the reservoir, the pump, and then back into the same reservoir. This is a similar setup to a condenser side of a water-cooled chiller, which is used to provide large-scale air conditioning to high-rise commercial buildings. The water is pushed through the heat exchanger of the chiller to pick up the unwanted heat from the building and this is then sent up to the cooling tower on the roof. The water is sprayed to release the heat into the atmosphere, and the water then collects in the pan of the cooling tower and recycles back to the chiller to pick up more heat. By using this type of system, we maintain the same suction pressure at the pump inlet. If the pump discharged into a separate tank, then the water level at the inlet will change and so will the pressure, resulting in the pump's performance varying. To combat this, we would need to top up the same quantity of water that was being removed. So it's therefore much easier to just loop the water back into the same tank. A centrifugal pump is fairly simple and has only a few parts. The main ones being the pump casing, the impeller, the shaft, the inlet and outlet, some bearings and an electric motor. My design looks like this. I have the pump casing, the impeller and shaft, the bearing house, the inlet and the outlet, and an electric DC motor. To keep the design simple, I decided to use materials that were readily available and easy to work with. For the pump casing, I used marine wood. This is a strong material that's formed with a waterproof glue. It's very easy to work with and is often used to build boats. I wanted to be able to see inside the pump as it rotates, so I decided to use a thick sheet of acrylic on the front with a rubber seal in between this and the pump housing. For the impeller, I again use acrylic because it's easy to work with and can be fused together with a solvent to form a very strong joint. The shaft was made from stainless steel threaded rod and stainless steel locking nuts. I use stainless steel because the impeller will be submerged in water and stainless steel is harder to rust compared to mild steel. The pipes were made from PVC because it's cheap and has a very low friction factor. And then to drive the pump, I use a 775 DC motor with a variable speed drive. I'll leave a link in the video description for these materials and parts if you want to check them out. Now that I had selected the materials, I just needed to design the pump. Centrifugal pumps use a volute, which is an expanding channel around the impeller that converts water velocity into pressure, as well as allowing a flow rate to develop. I already had some 70 mm discs for the impeller, so I based my volute around this and sketched a very rough volute shape into CAD. Again, if you would like a PDF copy of the pump plans, then you can find a link in the video description for how to get a copy. To design the blades of the impeller, we have three main options. The blades can either be backwards curved, straight, or forwards curved. To keep the design simple to build, I decided to use segments of 50 mm acrylic pipe to form the curves of the blades. The dimensions of the pipe mean I can only really fit around five blades onto the impeller. I just use the inverse of the backwards curved impeller design for the forwards curved design impeller. For the straight blade impeller design, I will also use five blades and these will be made from a thin sheet of acrylic. To assess the performance of each pump impeller design, I've utilized the SimScale CAE platform who have kindly sponsored this video. SimScale provides instant access to online computational fluid dynamics as well as finite element analysis via a user-friendly cloud-based application available through a simple subscription model. You can try the software for free and edit public projects at simscale.com via the community account, or you can create private projects with enhanced features via their professional team or enterprise accounts. If you want to try this software out yourself, then I've included a link in the video description for you. So after I designed the pump casing and the different impeller designs in CAD, these are then imported into SimScale for analysis. We don't know all the parameters from the start, 
but that's fine because we can make assumptions and run different operating points simultaneously to see how the pump would perform across a wide range. For example, we can change the rotational speed, the outlet pressure, the flow rate, etc. Once we have set up and run our simulations in SimScale for the different impeller types, we can then compare the results. So when we compare the results side by side with regards to pressure, the backwards curve design has this nice transition from the center out to the edges where the pressure is the greatest. So the velocity is turning into static pressure. That's what we need for the pump to work efficiently. The straight blade design doesn't have such a smooth transition. There are pockets of low pressure developing at the center which is going to impact the blade's performance. The forwards curved impeller has the most dramatic results with large areas of low pressure at the center and sudden changes towards the tips. So from this, we can see that the backwards curved impeller should be the most efficient at transforming velocity into pressure. If we take a deeper look at the backwards curved impeller, we can see that this design is not perfect and still needs some fine tuning. There are regions around both tips of each blade that can be improved to reduce losses. Then if we change the view, we can see that there are regions of concentrated pressure between the blades. This is leading to recirculation within the pump. We could use a shroud to reduce this and improve the pump's performance, and we can again run the simulations to quantify this impact. To really engineer this design, we would want to run multiple simulations with different blade thicknesses, different blade angles, different diameter impellers, and also number of blades to find the optimal design. But this will do for now as it's a simple project. To build the pump, I took some sheets of wood measuring 145 millimeters wide, 170 millimeters high, and 12 millimeters thick. I printed out my volute drawing and then used the trimmer to cut the paper to size and glue this to the wood as a template. To save time, I screwed two sheets of wood together and then used a scroll saw to carefully cut the center out from the template. With the center removed, we can now see how the pump volute is shaped. I then glued the template for the back plate to another sheet of wood and used the hole saw to remove some of the internal segment. That allows me to insert the blade of the saw and cut out the center. With the main parts of the pump casing made, I then used some strong wood glue to form a seal between each of the sheets and then let this set. Once that was ready, I then screwed all three sheets together and used a file and sandpaper to ensure a smooth internal surface. For the front cover, I again cut out the paper template and glued this to a sheet of acrylic. This is going to be bolted to the pump casing, so I drilled a number of holes using a drill bit which was ever so slightly larger than the diameter of the bolts which I'll be using. I then used a 22mm hole saw to create a hole in the material for the PVC inlet pipe. To try to ensure a tight fit of the inlet pipe, I took some wood and filed it down until it fitted inside the PVC pipe. I then heated the pipe with a heat gun until it was malleable and then I pushed the front cover over this so it would form a nice seal. Between the front plate and the pump volute, we need a rubber seal and for that I'm using a 2mm thick sheet of rubber. I traced the outline of the volute onto this rubber sheet and then cut this out which would allow me to see inside whilst also ensuring a seal around the edges. For the impeller, I took a 70mm diameter acrylic disc and then I found the center using the center gauge on the combination set. I then drilled through the disc using a drill bit which was the same diameter as the threaded shaft. To form the blades, I took some 50 millimeter acrylic tube and then I tightly wrapped and taped some white paper around this, making sure that the edges were all aligned. The blades are 20 millimeter in height, so I measured this onto the tube and then using the edge of the paper to draw a line around the circumference. I then cut along this line to remove the section I needed and then place this segment onto the impeller design to mark the start and end points of each blade. These segments were then cut free from the tube to form the blade. With all the blades now cut, I took some solvent and applied this to the base of each blade before moving the blade into the required position. For the bearing housing, I again cut out the CAD template and glued this to a piece of wood. Once that was set, I attached it to two more sheets of wood and then used the hole saw to cut a hole which the bearings will sit in. These pieces of wood were glued and held together with screws. Once this glue was dry, I used a file to remove the excess glue and widen the hole just enough so that the bearings would fit tightly. I then placed two bearings and a spacer onto the threaded shaft and forced these into position. For the shaft, I used some stainless steel threaded rod as well as some flange locking nuts to hold the impeller in place. 
With the blade temporarily installed, we can see that it rotates well and there's a small gap between the blade and the bearing house wall. The volute casing and the bearing house were glued together to form a seal between the materials and then held together with some extra long screws. The wood was covered with a white primer and then a few layers of a waterproof coating. To assemble the pump, I placed the shaft and the impeller into the casing and gave it a quick spin to test it out. I then used a flange locking nut and a normal nut on the back to lock these into position. This prevents the impeller from moving back and forth and also allows me to remove it later on to change the impeller. To attach the front cover to the pump casing, I used some self-tapping screws, along with a metal and rubber washer. These washers are used to reduce the stress on the acrylic sheet so that it wouldn't crack. That's also why I used a drill bit that was slightly larger than the screw diameter. For the outlet, I simply inserted the 22mm pipe and added a piece of rubber to create a tight joint. And I then covered these in hot glue to hold them in place. I then fitted a pressure gauge to the inlet and the outlet of the pump to take some measurements. The pump is driven by a 775 DC motor, which is controlled via a pulse width modulation speed controller. The supply for this comes from the DC bench power supply. A simple dial controls the speed of the motor. These parts were then mounted at the back of the motor and joined to the shaft through a coupling. By the way, we have covered how DC motors work, as well as pulse width modulation. Do check these videos out, links down below. To test the pump, I made this simple open loop setup. We have a water tank and a PVC pipe which runs through a bend, then through a ball valve, and then into the inlet of the pump. The pump is being driven by the DC motor and the speed controller. This is powered by the bench power supply. The outlet of the pump then rises up through some bends and then comes back down into the supply tank. I then used a water cup to measure the flow rate. Now, as we can see, the pump is working quite well. I managed around 16 liters per minute at maximum flow rate but the tools and methods I used to test the pump were not accurate enough to compare them with my simulations. Firstly, the gauges did not read any pressure, which makes assessing the pump's performance very difficult. So it will instead have to be done through long manual calculations and some large assumptions. There were some leaks from the pump. Most of these could have been stopped with some waterproof grease, but unfortunately I didn't have any of this at the time. The water cup is not exactly a precision instrument, but it's all I had available at the time, so it will have to do. A big problem I faced was cavitation. As you can see here, there is air inside the impeller, and the rate of cavitation is increasing with speed. The air is being sucked in through small gaps around the inlet pipe because of the low pressure region created at the eye of the impeller. I also think having the return water fall into the tank is causing small bubbles in the supply. Now, this is a working prototype, so problems like these are expected, and now that we know these issues, we can rectify them in a future model. So, how did the pump and the impellers perform? In all of the designs, we can see that no flow was developed in the system until the shaft reached around 1000 RPM. Comparing the results of the three different impellers, we can see that the backwards curved impeller was the most efficient. That's because for every watt of electricity consumed, it was able to convert this into more useful mechanical work, which results in a higher flow rate compared to the other designs. To assess the efficiency of the impeller, I tried to account for the losses of the electrical motor. From the manufacturer's data, it shows that the minimum efficiency is around 40%, and the maximum is around 72%. But I will use these figures just to get a vague estimate. Taking this into account, we can see that the backwards curved impeller had a peak efficiency range of between 15.4 and 27.8%. The straight blades were between 13.3 and 23.9%, and the forwards curved blades between 12.5 and 22.57%. Now these are just ballpark figures though, because there are many inaccuracies in the data and measurements, and as we know, if you input bad data, then you get bad results out. One thing we can conclude from this experiment is that designing the pump and impeller with 3D CAD models and then testing them through SimScale CFD package was far more accurate and time efficient than trying to manually build and test multiple different impeller designs in your shed. It only took a few minutes to set up the simulations and one to two hours to obtain accurate results. That's why more and more engineering companies are moving to this technology and it really is the future of design engineering. Okay, that's it for this video, but to continue your learning, then check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson.
Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, as well as the engineeringmindset.com.